Hi there and welcome to my first guitar top staining video. Today I'll be staining this uh, flame maple top uh, cobalt blue. First I'll start by dyeing the whole thing black. That will then um, help me highlight the figure and the grain on top of the wood. As you'll see, I'll put a couple of coats on first and then I'll end up sanding most of it back because uh, obviously it will be too dark otherwise. I'll also be f uh, forwarding through this and playing it for you at triple speed so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm just trying to get good coverage here, making sure it's all even. Obviously uh, I need to do the headstock as well because that's also got a maple veneer so I want the same effect there. So I start off with uh, staining the whole thing black. Then after that's dry I come back at it with my orbital sander and 400 grit sandpaper. As I say I'll take quite a bit of it off but I do want this guitar to be fairly dark so uh, I'll be leaving probably more of it on than I would if it was like a normal burst guitar but this is less of a burst and more of a patterning. So here I go with just some 600 grit sandpaper just doing some of the rest of it by hand and here's the cobalt blue uh, stain that I've got from Rothko and Frost it is an alcohol based stain as is all the stains I've used so far um, you, you do get an issue with the alcohol based stains because they tend to sit where you put them rather than if I was using water based you'd be able to fade and move the colours about a bit more so as you'll see in this video, there's a lot of back and forth going on, um, but yeah, in the end I get the result I want, so yeah. So here I go with the, uh, the first coat, again make sure you get a nice even coverage. And here I'm just taking back a few places where I, I thought was a bit blotchy, so I'm going to go back again and do, redo that. Also at this point I decided that I, while this isn't a traditional burst I did want the edges darker so I went with some of that ebony stain for the sides, for the edges. Um, it did go a bit far as you can see what I was saying about how alcohol stains just sit where you put them. There's a really hard line around that edge now. Um, so keep adding layers then I'll go back and sand keep adding layers go back and sand and it's just back and forth until you get what you want really and as I sand away you'll see those harsh edges start to fade away a bit and I start getting the effect that I really want so here I'm just say going at those edges with 600 grit sandpaper just trying to fade them down a bit because that line is a bit too harsh. So get some more blue on there, try and fade it in, sand it back, fade it in. I found that this blue wasn't quite as bright in some ways as I thought it would be or as strong. 
Um, you don't need to mix this stuff that I've got, it's just straight out of the bottle. So it was just a case of adding more layers, adding more layers until I got the colour I wanted to, which I do get to in the end, as you will soon see. So there I go again, a bit more sanding and feathering those edges in, trying to get it all to merge nicely and get, take away all those harsh lines. If you're doing this yourself, you'll find that, you know, even when you're using water-based or whatever, it is very much a back and forth process, you know, it's a slight fight as it is to get what you want. Um, so yeah, don't be disheartened if, you know, it doesn't go exactly the way you want it to straight away, keep at it, you know, sand it back, keep at it, and eventually you will get the effect you want. Here I'm, I'm almost at the colour now that you know I'm, I'm happy with, but it's still a slight harsh line to some of those edges. Uh, so I'm still going back with the sandpaper a couple more times, put another coat on, but we're almost there now. Colours really coming through, that's really what I was looking for. A nice and deep blue and some nice figuring on the flamed maple lines. Obviously, not forgetting to do the headstock at the same time. So, here we are. I'm pretty happy with this. It's what I, well, like I said, it's not a traditional burst as such. I've just got it slightly dark around the edges, um, but made the best of the flame that was there. And here's the uh, headstock, also a nice piece of flame maple veneer. And there we go. So the next thing is I need to get some true oil on that, which is uh, my favorite finish at the moment. First thing I have to do though is scrape the edges so, so we can reveal the binding as I do with a sharp razor blade. And then I did a similar sort of thing to the headstock but instead of using binding I just scraped the edges to reveal the maple underneath and it gives you a sort of faux binding which I think looks pretty cool. And here's the first layer of true oil. pretty happy with that. Yes, yeah, so you can see that lovely Asian mahogany for the back and the neck. Needed no stains, really beautiful colour. Really complements the front of the guitar. And there we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've still got a few more coats of trill to put on. There's that back. It's going to have two Gibson P90s, so I think this guitar is really going to come out well and sound great. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, there should be a demo up in a few weeks uh, of this guitar all finished and you can hear how it sounds. If you want to uh, find out more about my builds, I have current build diaries at my Facebook page, which is Rabswood Guitars on Facebook, if you search for that. Also, you could check out my website, rabswoodguitars.co.uk and check my YouTube page for some of my other videos of my completed builds. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.